Talk about growth. Um, the United States, an important market for you, clearly not the most important. Your majority of your sales, majority of the income is, is from outside of the United States. So what's the most promising growth market right now? Well, um, emerging markets are naturally, uh, they are growing much faster than uh, Western markets like North America, like Western Europe, like Japan, for a simple reason, because uh, those markets have a lower per capita consumption compared to Western markets. So China, obviously, growing um, for us uh, very um, satisfactorily, uh, significantly ahead of the growth rate, uh, macroeconomic growth rate for the country. India, uh, again, uh, double-digit growth uh, for us. And many other markets that are not as big, not as well known, also uh, in the emerging world, Africa, uh, Eurasia, markets of Eurasia and Africa, um, uh, um, like markets like Indonesia, Malaysia, all uh, growing, and uh, Latin American markets all growing um, uh, at, at significant rates, significantly ahead of uh, some of the Western markets. But the important thing is we are also generating growth in Western markets, um, and that is really the key to our success, balanced growth, um, growth in terms of both Western markets, developed markets, as well as emerging markets, but also um, balanced growth in terms of both sparkling beverages and still beverages. Sure. But when you talk about all of those emerging markets, and let's take China in particular, because you have been so bullish on China for quite a long time. You've done quite well there. You have very aggressive uh, growth prospects there. Uh, you're saying many more $1 billion Coke brands by 2020 in China. But, but you face two big issues there. You face increasing competition, and you face question marks about the political landscape. So how do you battle those and continue to win in that market? Well, firstly, um, we love competition. It's, it, 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 it makes us a, a better uh, business, better company. Uh, so we've got no problems with that. Uh, the second uh, piece is that you have to be very local. It's, uh, our business is a fusion of global brands and, and, and local know-how. And we have great Chinese partners, uh, bottling companies that are, uh, know the local environment very well. And, and we market to local uh, tastes, local needs of consumers, uh, uh, and we position our brands on, on a local basis. In terms of the economic climate uh, of China, uh, I think um, there's absolutely, for me, no issue at all. Um, looking at the world at large, China is a very stable place. Well, let's compare it to Russia, then. Uh, you're on your way to Russia. You do significant business in the country, but there's a huge uh, battle of corruption in, in, in doing business in Russia. Right. Well, I think, you know, um, when you're in the business of selling non-alcoholic beverages um, and you are in the business, you're, you're not in the energy business or you're not in the business of real estate or uh, in uh, arms or other things like that, you're just essentially selling moments of pleasure at cents at a time, um, we have found the landscape uh, uh, a, a very plausible and uh, friendly landscape in terms of foreign investment in Russia. We've been there, uh, we entered, re-entered Russia in 1992 for the first time. I was involved at that time when we uh, were looking at our f putting our first plant in St. Petersburg. Uh, and since then, we've invested significantly in Russia. I've recently announced a, 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 another a billion dollar investment program over the next uh, two to three years. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, we look at the future and we see a, a great market for us with uh, 150 million consumers, um, uh, more consumers in the middle class, and the, f the f countries like Russia, uh, you have to bet on, on a long-term basis. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. What's the future of Coca-Cola? And I mean, how key is Coke, Diet Coke, Cherry Coke, Coke Zero, et cetera, Coca-Cola Classic, how key are those to your brand? You have 400 brands that many people don't know are yours. They're making more money for you than Coke, right? We, Coca-Cola, the success of Coca-Cola, trademark Coca-Cola, is essential to the Coca-Cola company. It is our heritage. Um, we, we have a 120, almost 125-year 120 heritage. 
with brand Coca-Cola. It is the most well-known trademark in the world. So um, we have 400 brands. It's, it's all about choice. It's all about ensuring that we can be the leading offer of choice for the consumer in more than 200 markets around the world with leading brands that we invest in, innovate, and market responsibly. But in order to do that, in order to continue in that direction, you have to have access to potable water. You have to have mm. enough access to clean water, your main ingredient, uh, while also doing it in a responsible way so that there is enough for everyone else that needs it. There, the, the world is facing, some would say, a water crisis in the future. You've been very outspoken about this. What's your take on well, that? Well, in Coca-Cola, we were one of the first in the world to declare water a scarce resource. Uh, it is, whichever way you cut it, it is a scarce resource. Um, and we have s publicly come out as uh, uh, a comp international uh, business, a uh, global business that have said that we will be water neutral by the year 2020. We will do that through reducing the water in our 900 plus factories around the world. We will recycle our water and give back clean water to the municipalities where we um, operate our plants in. And we will replenish the water by creating water harvesting projects. We have hundreds of these water harvesting projects in India, in Asia, in parts of Africa where we capture the water and give back to the communities that water that is captured through our water harvesting projects. Through those three R's, mm -hmm. we, are, we will become water neutral. But, but that's not even enough. Um, I was here in Davos moderating a panel on water a couple of days ago, and um, what we were saying is it is essential that we also look at our entire value chain, not just supply chain, entire value chain, and start working and influencing our value chain in order to ensure that they also adhere to the same principles and that we can then collectively, through the collaboration of government, civil society, and business like us, uh, ensure that there is sufficient amount of water, not just for us, but also future generations. You'll have to, certainly. Thank you so much for the insight. Thank you.